Wow. Thank you, Lord. Can somebody say thank you, Lord? It's good to be with you all today. Happy Wednesday. This is the third Wednesday of January 2022. Oh, the, the years uh, seem like it's in a rush already. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church, 544 Government Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. To our Facebook Live and YouTube audiences, welcome to today's worship experience. I am Pastor Frederick Sweetwine. It's good to be with you on today. Today I will continue uh, from Sunday's talk from the subject, Seizing This Moment in Time, uh, from Ecclesiastes uh, verse, the ninth chapter, verses 11 through 18. Uh, Doris Wells, William Mullen, I did get your message. We're praying for your grandson. Uh, we're praying for the family of um, Sister Betty Hardy Smith. Amen. Uh, and that home going service, the family of Stephanie Norwood, and that home going service, the, the uh, family of Juanita Brown, which will be tomorrow in Bugaloosa, Louisiana. Marilyn and Tammy, we coming. The family of Brandon K. Uh, K. Uh, Valentine, BK, we're coming to Dallas on Friday for that homegoing celebration. We want to continue to lift up those um, that um, ask for prayer. Uh, Sister Shanice Lewis, bless you, woman of God. Uh, we're keeping you in prayer. Um, let's pray the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read, and your word proclaim, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Uh, good evening, everyone. I see you in the building. We thanking God for you, Sister Joyce Purley. We uh, in prayer for uh, Quan, uh, amen. We touch and agree, believing God can do anything but fail. Let's get to the word. Uh, if you have your Bibles, let's get to the word. Ecclesiastes, uh, the ninth chapter, verses 11 uh, through 18. Uh, King Solomon here is, uh, is, uh, is the author of Ecclesiastes. Uh, he says, I returned and saw under the sun. And, and that word, I returned, uh, where did he go? We're going to talk about it. The race I want you to hear this. He says, the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches of men of understanding, uh, nor favor of men to skill, but time and chance, both of those, time and chance. We're going to break those down today. Uh, uh, for man also does not know his time. He says, like fish taking in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare. So the sons of men are snared in an evil time. When it falls suddenly upon them, the wisdom I have, amen, the wisdom, I want you to hear this, the wisdom I have also seen under the sun, and it seemed great to me. There was a little city with a few men in it. A great king came against it and besieged it and built great snares around it but there was found in it a poor wise man poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no one remembered the same poor man uh, then I said wisdom is better than strength wisdom is better than strength if you're with me on this evening I want you to type with me wisdom is better than strength wisdom uh, we talked about what wisdom is and what it isn't. Uh, you, it, wisdom don't, <laughs> it is not associated with age. You say, well, the older I get, the better I get. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> because I've seen some old, older people um, that was um, <laughs> needed to gain wisdom and needed to grow up. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, uh, despised and his word are not heard. Words of the wise spoken quietly should be heard rather than the a shout of a ruler of fools. <laughs> There's some old people that still have acted foolish. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Yeah, yes, yes. But one sinner destroys much good. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ecclesiastes 9, 11 states, I've seen something else under the sun. The race is not given to the swift. Mm -mm. In other words, 
Don't be swift to judge every situation like you know everything <laughs> because God still sits high and he looks low. Uh, you see, we miss opportunities when we get distracted by trying to judge everything. It's not given to you because you're the first to find out. You see, the Bible reminds us uh, in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2. He says, I, and I love this, this, this verse and this chapter in, this, in the Bible, in the Old Testament. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set me up on a tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me. You see, the Lord answered you see, sometimes you're praying for something, but it takes the Lord to answer. God doesn't always communicate with us like he did with Habakkuk. Uh, the Bible says that the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. You see, not only did the Lord speak to him, he gave him instructions. Oh God, uh, you see, that's why wisdom <laughs> it's better than strength <laughs> because the Lord gave him instruction. He says, write the vision. Sometimes uh, we get so caught up in hearing a word from God that we don't write it down. He says, write the vision. Oh God, can somebody write that with me? Write the vision and make it plain. <laughs> Write the vision. You see, sometimes we say, well, I got it all stored in my head. No, put it on paper. Make it plain. Write the vision and make it plain. Write it up on. You see, that when people, uh, when they read it, they can be running and read it. Uh, oh, God. You, you see, your billboard is being prepared. Oh God, your billboard is being prepared. You say, well, what, what is my billboard, Reverend? That's because anybody that runs by or drives by your billboard, uh, you know, your billboard is being prepared. It is it, saying, coming soon. I may not have it right now, but it's coming soon, somebody. You see, as the Lord answered me, he said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, uh, oh God, that they may run. Oh God, uh, that he that may run may read it. Oh God, they can still see it. I don't care what they draw. They can be 60 miles an hour. They see your vision. Why? Because the Bible says in verse 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. You see, it, but at the end, it's going to speak. It, just because it's coming soon, it doesn't mean that I'm going to show it to you today. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you because you don't have to show it to me right now for me to believe it. You don't have to show it to me right now for me to have faith in it. The Bible says, and the end of it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, it may take 20 years. Wait for it. It may take five minutes. Wait for it because it will surely come. Let me tell you this. Uh, he says, it will not tarry. Stop. Oh, God. You got to hear this. Stop arguing with third graders. That's right. That's right. When people are not on your level, stop giving them a piece of your mind. The Bible says, don't cast your pearls amongst one. Stop. Can you type that with me? Uh, somebody. I will not argue with a third grader. <laughs> why are you in the middle of the street fighting a third grader and you're in college? Mm. And why are you arguing, wasting time with someone that may not have the understanding to conceive what you, what you are saying to them? The Bible says, oh God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You see, he says, the, the end of a thing is it, going to speak and not lie. Though it, it may take a little while, but it's surely coming. It will not tear. Behold, his soul, which is, is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just, hey God, shall live by faith. The just, that's who I'm talking about. I will not argue with a third grader. Nope, 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 nope. Because the just shall live by faith. Now, I don't have to see it. The just shall live by what? Faith, oh God, the Jess, the Jess, is, uh, we're going to live by faith. The Bible declares for the written vision, write the vision, make it plain, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end 
it shall speak. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for speaking. Even when my haters didn't believe I was going to make it. Even when the haters didn't think I was going to live. Even when the haters thought it was going to take me out. Even when the haters talked about me. Even when the haters uh, thought that I wouldn't come through with, with God's blessings. He says, wait for it. This shall surely come. It will not tarry. The distractions ain't going to come. But follows the distraction is the vision. But, but if you don't have a vision, there's nothing to write. Can I say it again? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Uh, if you don't have, if you do not, if you don't, if you, if, you, if, if vision is obsolete in your space, there's nothing to write and nothing to follow. Because you are not on the path that God is speaking. Oh God, oh God, you, you see, there are laws created by God that govern the universe. Uh, Sometimes chance happens. That's what the Bible says, two things, time and chance. Chance happens and it seems as though it should be, <laughs> isn't what it is. You see, when God did speak to his servant Habakkuk, he gave him three responsibilities to, feel, to fulfill. He says, write the vision, number one. Number two, trust God's word. Uh, you, you see, in verses one through three, he says, write uh, God's vision. Not your vision, God's vision, because when your vision aligns up with God's vision, it becomes your vision and God's vision. He, he says, write the vision. But verse four and five says, trust God's word. I wish I had time to, to uh, unpack that a little bit more. But the third thing he says in verses 6 through 20, he said, declare God's judgment. You, you, you see, that's because we're on the right trajectory of doing what God has called us to do. Because if we don't, we can expect judgment. Oh God. As, as, uh, as Habakkuk waited for God's uh, reply in chapter 2, he said, in verse, the Lord answered me. Oh God. Oh God, thank you Lord for answering me. He says, write the vision. Hmm. Uh, coin, he says, write it, make it plain upon tables that he that run, run uh, that read it, he may run that read it. The thing that has drawn me to this section of scripture is running. You see, if we're going to seize this moment in time, some things we're going to have to go after with a whole heart. We, oh God. Oh God, I don't know about you, but I'm interested in running. I, I, I've spent all 20, most of 20 and 21 walking, but this is the year that I'm going to run. Oh God, oh God, I'm going to start jogging again this year. I, I used to say, no, I'm, I'm at the walking stage, but that's been two years. No, I'm at the running stage. I decree and declare I will run this year because God said I could. Can I get a witness? I'm going to run this year. Why? Because God said I could. And when God told Habakkuk to write the vision and the revelation that he was about to give him, God wanted him to write it down for the benefit of those who would run. Can I get some runners in the building to, to just wave your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to run. Uh, Dr. King, uh, he says, if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by any, but by all means, keep moving. I think that's how it went. He says, if you can't run, everybody's not going to run. He says, but if you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving. I'm going to keep moving in this season. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. Uh, carefully take down what I'm telling you today. Make it plain. Write it down. Oh, God. If you want your loved one saved, if you want your loved one delivered, decree and declare it in the earth realm. Speak it. My child shall live and not die. My child shall do the will of God. Even though you can't see it, sometimes you have to see it before you see it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes you're going to have to see it in the spirit before you see it in the natural. Oh, God, whatever, whatever it is, it looks like an opposition or adversity to you. I decree and declare right now, speak just the opposite. If your child is, is, is doing something like mine do, I decree 
decree and declare that he, that he's healed, that he's delivered, that he's set free. Why? Because I have to see it in the spirit before I see it in the flesh. Oh God, I thank you because the just shall live by faith. I'm not asking for permission what, what I think is going to happen. I'm going to speak by faith what shall happen in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't care what opposition is are facing you on today. I want you to decree and declare it shall not have victory over my life. I decree and declare that it shall not win. I decree and declare that God have made me the victor in this situation. I will not give up. I will keep running. I will, if I can't run, I'm going to walk. But I may be walking fast. Oh God, if I can't walk, I'm going to crawl. But by all means, I'm going to keep moving. Why? Because the Bible declares that I am above and not beneath. The Bible declares that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. But who is it given to? Those that have an opportunity to do better. I mean, those that have the opportunity to seize this moment in time. Occasionally, the fastest runner may fall before the finish line. There's the chance, surprise in the results, that the person that you didn't think was going to win, end up winning. I stopped by to let you know on this evening, ultimately, God is in charge of all outcomes. Therefore, we must be in the mindset to receive the blessings of God. Oh God, I talked about this Sunday, we have to be in what's called positional sanctification. I must position myself to be sanctified in him. Oh God, the Bible in Romans, the eighth chapter says, whom he called, he, he, he preordained, and whom he, he preordained, he, he called. God doesn't call people he don't want, and then he called them, he justified them, and he glorified them. Thank you, Lord, for this, this uh, positional sanctification that I'm now seated in a place where I can honor you, that I honor you, God. And, and you see, when you honor God like that, God will put you in a position that, that your skills may not have gotten you there, but God's grace and his mercy have allowed you to win in a way when you seem like you was least likely to achieve anything. Oh, God. Can I let you in on something? If we do our part, God would not hold us accountable for the outcome. But how many of us know that the Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. What our faith produce. You see, your faith, oh God, oh God, your faith produces so much. That's why you have to speak it in the earth realm, Ann Williams. You have to speak it in the earth realm. You may not know the outcome. You may not be able to see it. You may not even be able to uh, uh, to uh, uh, prophesy. But I, I, I speak to you today. Speak whatever you want by faith. Oh, God. Speak it by faith and watch God do the miraculous. Sometimes there are things we don't receive in the earth realm because we refuse to speak it. I don't speak against what I want. Uh, oh God, no, mm -mm, not over here. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not going to con keep considering what I don't want. I'm, I'm going to tell God and I'm going to speak what I want. If you want $100,000 in the bank, start speaking it. And, and God will give you the wisdom. You see, because wisdom allows the riches of man oftentimes. So if you want something from God, if you want healing in your body, keep speaking, God, I'm healed. God, thank you for, for, for uh, bringing me out. Lord, I thank you for, for even though my body is still racked with pain, I'm speaking victory over my body in the midst of pain. I'm speaking victory over my body in the midst of the results that the test brought back. I'm speaking victory, oh God, over my life. I'm speaking victory over my children. I'm speaking victory over my grandchildren. I'm speaking victory over those that I communicate with. I bind spirits that come against me because I know that the Lord is good and he's merciful and he's just and he will not see me go down in flames but he will pick me up and raise me up into a place that he will receive glory because I'm speaking it in the earth realm thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord you see the race I don't care how fast other people are running or the battle to the strong 
<laughs> Nor does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or the favored, or the learned. I don't care. Occasionally, the, 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 the odds is going to win because God is sovereign over us all. His plans will always be accomplished, even though they may not be understood. But time and chance happens to us all. Oh my God, thank you. Time and chance are logical reasons why what should happen doesn't always happen. If something happens 90% of the time, nine times out of 10, but it will be the 10th time, the results are gonna be different. Oh God, I told you on Sunday, I like the way Joseph Prince put it. Oh God, and, and, uh, and I'm gonna share this with you. How can you have time and chance happen to you? The original Hebrew language reveals about how this can be your reality. The, he the Hebrew word, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. The Hebrew word for time is the word ith, E-T-H, uh, meaning time or season. Time or season. Huh? Yes, that's, you, you see, you can't blame anyone else for what you don't accomplish because it's, it does not matter how many degrees you have. It matters what you do with your time. Some people complain and say, oh no, they had a greater opportunity. It does not take the degrees to get the knowledge. It takes uh, the endurance to get the knowledge because everyone has 24 hours in a day. It does not matter what you, uh, it does not matter the 24 hours more than it, it matters what you do with your 24 hours. Some people play video games too much. Some people spend too much time on Facebook. Some people want too much relaxation because uh, everyone is given the Hebrew word ETH, meaning time or seasons. Everyone's going to have it. The Hebrew word for chance uh, happens or P-E-G. Next word, Q-A-R-A-H. Together with it, they present a picture not of random occurrences, but right happenings. Oh God, can some? Let me bring you up to speed. Can somebody type with me right happenings? They uh, that are dependent uh, on the uh, the Lord's orchestration. You, you see, it's it's unfortunate unfortunate that the word chance sometimes is used in the English translation. When you read time and chance, it, it seems like it may give the impression of um, random happenings. Uh, uh, it occurs that that it happened if by luck. But if you study the root word of a pega, p e g a, in the scriptures, you'll see it is from the from the word pega, which actually means to make intercessions or pray. Can I get a witness in the building? Huh? Let, let, let me introduce you uh, at, at this point to a principle in the Bible called uh, biblical interpretation called the first law of mention. <laughs> when you're studying a word, look at the first time it appears in the Bible. There's a lot of spiritual truth and I love this, the way Joseph Prince explained it. He said that um, there's a lot of spiritual truth and significance in the first occurrence of the word in the Bible. Applying the, uh, the word uh, uh, pega, which seemed in the Bible to be the first time it was used in Genesis 23 and 8, uh, uh, where it means intercede. So chance happens should more accurately be translated as prayed opportunities or prayed happenings. You see, when you pray, something shall happen. When you pray with opportunity and chance, God is saying, you're praying for something to happen and I hear you. So when you have the F, E-T-H, and the peg, uh, quora combined, it speaks of right time, right place, happenings or being at the right place at the right time doing the right thing as a result of your prayers. Can I get a witness in the building? You, you see, uh, if I'm going to pray and I'm going to seize this moment in time, you see, uh, God will allow my prayers to meet time. <laughs> 
God will allow my if, oh God, as a result of my prayer. And God is saying, I'm going to build you up as you seize this moment in time, and I'm going to answer your prayer. Can I get a witness in the building? Solomon first responds to the previous chapter it is along the lines of the idea is unavoidable, then you should live to your strengths. Work hard, achieve some success. But Solomon says life is not predictable. Mm -mm. Oh God. You would I I expect the, the fastest person to win the race. The strongest, the battle. The most intelligent to have the best things in life. But I've seen people under the bridge with PhDs. Oh God. But that that is not the way. Our abilities are no guarantee to success. Time and chance happens to them all. If God did it for someone else, he can do it for me. <laughs> oh God, can you type it with me? Lord, do it. Lord, comma, do it for me. <laughs> you see, time and chance happen to them all. I, You know, Dr. Uh, Benjamin Mays, he wrote a poem. He says, I have only just a minute. Uh, I have only just a minute. Only 60 seconds in it. Uh, forced upon me. Can't refuse it. Didn't seek it. Didn't choose it. But it's up to me to use it. Uh, can I say it again? Uh, oh, God. I have only just one minute. Only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me. Can't refuse it. Didn't seek it. Uh, didn't choose it. Uh, but it's up to me to use it. Uh, it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. Seizing this moment in time. We must seize the moment. If God give you the same 24 hours, seize your moment. Oh God, oh God. You can be fast and be the loser. You can be strong and be the loser. You can be smart, skilled, and wise, and be poor. Proverbs 3.16 says, There are riches and honor in wisdom, but there are also expectations being in the hand of God. Brings us to the place of faith, but it also blows up any sense of self-confidence. Wisdom, intelligence, or skill are not always guarantees a provision. But let me say a wealth or favor. But let me say this to us. If you obtain wisdom, you, you see, the God kind of wisdom, not the world kind of wisdom, but the God kind of wisdom, you'll be in, in direct favor of God to fulfilling God's divine plan, God's divine purpose. Seasons of our life, they're unpredictable. They're inescapable. They are nets and snares, and they come suddenly because of time and chance. Chance is not randomness. Oh, God. It is things that appear outside of what we may be able to predict, but they are not beyond what God has ordained. Thank you, Lord, for ordaining an opportunity for me to seize this moment in time. If you're with me on this evening, I want you to type with me, Lord, come on, help me seize this moment in time. You, you, you see, because if I let this moment pass and God is knocking on the door, I, I, I told you on Sunday that when God opens one door for you, that next knock may be seven or eight years uh, in between the knocks. So that's why you have to seize the moment. Why, Reverend? Because the knocks are not every day. Because the knocks don't always come uh, as, a, as a warning trumpet. But sometimes the knock comes. Oh, God, I, I see your faith. Uh, push. Uh, pray until something happens. I like that. I like that because the Lord wants us to seize this moment in time. We are still in a fallen world where evil and sin still have daily impact in our lives. But we can't predict everything that might happen or even foresee great calamity. Man does not know his time. We're like fish unaware. We're swimming into the net or a bird that, that doesn't know we're about to be ensnared. But birds don't stop flying and fish don't stop swimming just because there may be a trap in the world. And I'm saying to you on today, don't give up. Don't stop seizing the moment. Live out the best. Now let me tell you why. 
Because when you meet, oh God, can I preach a little while? Oh God, when you get to the other side, oh, when you, when, when you uh, breathe your last breath on this side, God is saying, your work is not finished. God is saying, you know, he has laid up for us a crown of righteousness. Can, can I take my time with this? A crown of righteousness for you. But you don't know all the impact that you made while you was here. Just because you died, it don't mean he can judge your record yet because you're still impacting where you left. I'm saying to you, if you seize this moment in time, your impact will live outlive your life. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your impact to the earth will outlive your breath here on earth. My God, my God. Our response isn't to fear what is around every corner, but it, it, it's it's to keep going and to keep pursuing what God has called us to do. This is the call to endurance in an unpredictable world. We must rest in the world to come. Yeah, I, I hear people say, oh, I got to get my rest. I need 12 hours. No, you don't. Oh, no. Oh, no. You need as many hours as God have given you because you have to seize this moment in time. Oh, Lord. Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus, to seize this moment. I may be older, but I'm still seize this moment. Take off your grave clothes. Just because you're older, don't mean that you just put on that, uh, what they used to call them things, a moo and just sit around the house. No, 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 no. You still be a productive, wholesome citizen of the kingdom of God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ecclesiastes um, 9, 13 through 18. I've also seen this example of wisdom on under the sun and it seems so great to me that was a little city with a few men I read it earlier and a great king came against it and besieged, uh, besieged it building great uh, siege works against it but there was found in it a poor wise man and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. You see, nobody remembered him, but his reward is still working. <laughs> my God, my God. The word of the wise heard and quiet are better than shouting of rulers amongst fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But one sinner destroys much good. There is a good and right hope in this life and the life to come. So I say to you, go, enjoy, work, endure, and rest. Oh God, go, enjoy, work, endure, and rest. You see, these verses speaks of a little, little city uh, found in a state of oppressive uh, conflict. What is the church if it's not a little city? <laughs> What is the world apart from God if, if not against God's people? Oh God, I stopped by to let you know, don't, don't allow moments to pass you by without making an impact. I will, I can, and I must make an impact. I'm going to see it before I see it. I'm going to speak it before I see it. It doesn't have to be before me. I'm going to say it anyway because I am a, a, a Christian and the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. If you're on the justice team of God, Oh God, you're going to have to live by faith. You're going to have to walk it. You're going to have to speak it. Oh God, God allows us to be on, on, on the uh, seated in heavenly places. We don't have to look down on anyone. We don't have to fight with third graders. All we have to do is keep looking up and say, Lord, what would you have me do? And you become so rich and powerful. I'm not talking about money in the bank. I'm talking about power in heaven. I'm building, I'm building. We are building God's kingdom while we're here in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus didn't have a place to call home on earth. Jesus on the cross with all the world against him. In Rome, religious leaders, Satan, sinful humanity, all laying siege against him, despising him, rejecting his word. Oh God. All he can hear in an abyss is crucify him. And he remains silent. He sees the moment. While the cross looked like a time that, of defeat, and it looked like it was going to be strong against him, God's son, dead and buried, it won't last. But I stopped by to let you know on this Wednesday evening, he sees the moment because the Bible says three days later, oh God, there was a resurrection. The, the Baptist preacher said earlier on Sunday morning, 
just a little while before day. He got up with all power in his hand because it wasn't predicated on what he was going through, but he knew that God would raise him up. And because death wasn't the end for Jesus, it doesn't mean that it's the end for us either. Jesus promises life. For those who place their faith in him, he also promises a return uh, with, a, with a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, not just a little city, but a great eternal city. Not saved by one that's forgotten, but the greatest king of kings, the greatest lord of lords, uh, who will never be forgotten and whose praise should never ever be sung in, in a way that's di diminished, but whose praise shall be sung forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. According to his great mercies, he has caused us to be born again, to live a living, a, a life through hope and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <laughs> To, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you and I, oh God, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Because Jesus died one day for us, we can live all others for him. This is the hope. This is the promise of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. For those that trust in the Lord Jesus that will seize this moment in time. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I give myself back to you, Lord. The doors of the church are open. Send a man, send a woman. Send a boy, send a girl. God is doing a new thing. God is, there's a shift going on. And God, I thank you for the shifting. I thank you this year, God, shall be a year. Oh, God, thank you. This year, 2022, shall be a year of reconciliation. This is the year. Oh, God, those things that the devil have taken away, they shall be brought back in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare it over your life right now. I speak it. I see it in the spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to ask those that, that are not saved and you want the Lord Jesus to be a part of your life. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shall be saved. Oh God, thou shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. You're going to be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord, we thank you today. We thank you for saving the sinner. We thank you, Lord, for saving us. We thank you, Lord, for, for bringing us closer to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for a little, a little reminder today that we need to cease these moments in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to continue to, to lift up those that's on the prayer and recovering uh, list. Oh, God. Oh, God. The Smith family, the Norwood family, Juanita Brown's uh, family, the Valentine family. Continue to ask blessings for Sister uh, Shanice Lewis. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're doing in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for for all those that's listed on the screen right now. We pray, God, that you 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 touch us, God, and touch them. Touch us, God. Touch them where we need to be touched. Bring healing, Jesus. Where we need healing, bring deliverance, oh God. Where we need to be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. We touch and agree, believing that it's done in the mighty name of Jesus. Do it for your glory, God. And we'll forever praise your holy name. Father God, we pray for those that's been affected uh, by COVID-19. For those that have the virus. For those that just have gotten over the virus. For those that's going to get the virus. Father God, we, we pray now. We bind the hindering spirits of taking them out, oh God. The double vaccine uh, with the booster. We pray, God, now for them. We pray, God, for those with no vaccine. Oh, God, we pray for those that have made up their minds to get the vaccination. We pray, God, for those that have gotten a booster. God, we thank you in advance for allowing the power of the Holy Spirit to lead God and direct us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, can somebody shout amen? Can somebody shout amen? Oh, Lord, I love you on today, God. 
I love you all today, God. We love you, God. You're doing a mighty thing, a mighty work in our lives. Oh, God, I will always have. Why, Reverend? I'm going to always give. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for those that have not sown your seed, the burning the mortgage. Uh, good evening, Reverend Mallard. Bless your heart, woman of God. For those that, uh, that have not sown a seed to the burning of the mortgage, we only have about 79,000 to go out of 185. I think that's a good thing. Uh, oh God, I, I, I love what God is doing. If you have not sown your seed, whether it's $10, $50, $100, 1000 some have sown five and 10000 but we thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for what he's doing. If you have not sown your seed, uh, if you're uh, doing Cash App on today, um, this dollar sign, Wesley, UMCBR, click on the Burn the Mortgage. If you're sending a check, 544 Government Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70802. If you're giving, um, you want to text your gift, you can text it to 225-500. 2023. Uh, I never uh, ask you to sow a seed without me sowing myself. Amen. I believe that the power of God, I'm going to sow my seed to the burning of the mortgage. Amen. Amen. Um, you can just click down. Uh, it's going to say Founders Day Tide, burn the mortgage. That's the one I want. Amen. Your gift is processing. It's done. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Um, for those that's tithing or um, sowing, uh, offering on this evening, we thank God for your, your gifts. Uh, shall we pray? Spirit of the living God, we thank and praise you for the gifts that was received. We pray, oh God, for, the, uh, for you being the giver of gifts. We thank you, God, for the, the, the gifts that you've given us that we've sown back into the kingdom. We will uh, forever lift you up. And bless your name. We pray some 30, 60, 100 fold blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. And let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. God is doing a new thing and he's doing it through you. God is, oh God, seize this moment in time. Allow the power of God, oh God, to live in you and through you that the kingdom of God may be glorified with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Regardless, proud of our youth. Look out for great things they're doing. 2022 is going to be a different type of year. Oh, God, I'm projecting great things. I, I see it in the spirit. I see it in the spirit. You can go to our website, uh, wesleybr.com, if you want to uh, learn of where the funeral services will be on uh tomorrow and Friday. Tomorrow it'll be in Bugaloosa. You can get the address off the website uh, for uh, Sister uh, Juanita. Um, uh, yes, Brown. Amen. That's Marilyn uh, mother and Tammy's grandmother and um, the nephew of Philip Smith. Amen. Spoke with him today. Uh, look, uh, church service. If you're coming Sunday, uh, sign up on the website, www.wesleybr.org. Amen. 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 All hearts and minds are clear. Let the church say amen. The whole church say amen. God has spoken. I see you, woman of God, Doris Wells, Will, and Mullen. Thank you. Your grandchild are in our prayers. Amen. I bless his little heart. I love that that uh, that look that he had when he was being baptized. Ali, our sweet one, is in the building. Good to see you. Doris Dickinson, you, you're walking better, woman of God. Sister Mary Samuels, amen, amen, and amen. Let the whole church say amen. Janice Pitcher, amen. Bless you, woman of God. Robin Clark. Amen. Good to see you in the building. Yes, yes, yes. Show record, my friend. Good to see you, woman of God. The whole church. Say amen. Yes, God. Shanice, good to see you, woman of God. I see you doing great things. Thyris Edith Lewis, hello there. Amen. Yes, the whole church. Say amen. Marilyn January. Amen. That looked like some hand clapping over there. Look like your feet getting light. <laughs> Yes, Lillian Enos Robinson is in the building. Good to see you, woman of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank God. We thank God. We thank him. Ann Williams, amen. Tracy White, man, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, yes, yes. The whole church, say amen. Look, Reverend Mallard, amen. Good to see you. Good to see you. Coin Smith, we need to talk. I think you owe me a phone call, Cohen. That's right. Barbara Salas Chin. Amen. 
Did I miss anybody? Anybody else shouting out to the Lord? Amen. I see your coin. Yes, yes, yes. Look, I'll see you on Sunday. I'm going to finish this message up. It's a two. Oh, God. It's a double weekender. <laughs> oh, God. There's some more God is put, uh, poured in my spirit. I want to share with you because I want to talk this week uh, uh, from the same scripture, the same subject. But I want to talk about opportunity, how it knocks on the door and uh, be prepared for this coming Sunday. It should be a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. I will be at the funeral in the uh, in the morning with uh, T Tammy in Maryland. Also, I'll be in um, Dallas, Texas on Friday at the uh, Dr. Tony Evans Church uh, for the home going of um, BK hey, Valentine. Okay, Ursula, Ursula Turner. Tell your mom I said hello. Amen. The whole church say amen. Peace and blessings unto you.